Hey, it's Dink, back with another devlog for our toy themed parkour game. I'm Luke, one of the artists on this project, and I'm going to tell you about some of the progress we've made over the last couple of weeks. You might remember from our previous video that we wanted to have a toy theme for our game, but it was causing us a few issues with our direction. It took us a day or two to flesh out the details and try out many different ideas, which ultimately led us to something that we feel was a good mix that served the visuals and gameplay. With this idea, we start the character in what would appear to be a child's bedroom that would quickly shift into an imaginary world that we wanted, decorated with a mix of toy themed assets and real world objects. This idea showed a lot of promise, but it was a lot easier said than done. So I set off to try and create a rough mock-up of how this would work with regards to our game. Now typically in a AAA studio, this kind of thing would be done by a technical artist or a designer. We were just a small team, so this job was left to me since I had a little bit of background with technical art and our designer is a little busy sorting out a few event tick issues, but we'll have a bit more on that later. So, as a source of reference, I recently played through the 2017 reboot of Prey and I loved the looking glass they had in the game's opening. I wanted to recreate that, or at least something similar to the opening to our levels. The glass window that looks out onto the city from your apartment is actually just a highly advanced one-way mirror and it projects the illusion of a cityscape on the one side and a normal window pane on the other. Now after doing some big boring big boy research I was pretty confident I could achieve something similar by using a similar rendering technique to one found in Portal by Valve. See Unreal has this neat feature where you can render whatever a camera is looking at as a 2D texture and then use some programming wizardry you can have the camera move to face the way the player is looking to basically look through the glass like it was a portal. Once I made sure that the system was working Ollie made a room that the player would see out of this window rather than putting a whole environment in an engine that can be quite taxing but just for the sake of a few seconds of gameplay. I created a 2D texture of the room instead. After putting the camera inside of it, I think the effect is quite convincing. Like, that's not a real environment on the other side of glass, and that just blows Lewis's mind. Then, all we had to do was put this texture on a destructible mesh using the Apex Destruction plugin we love so much, and boom, now you can shatter your way into a child's imagination. Which actually sounds quite violent now that I say that out loud, oh god. Time slows down as you shatter your way into the beginning of the level, and the name of the level and world it belongs to slide onto the screen while time is slowed giving you a little bit of time to read it before you are flung into the action. We aren't 100% on this effect just yet, but we wanted it to look like a boss screen encounter from End of the Gungeon or the Borderlands series that fit with the level's unique art style. But if we do ship the game with this time slow feature, we'll be sure to add in the option to disable it for the sake of those who want to try and speedrun the game, and hopefully we'll have more ways to customise your gameplay experience with settings so you can play as fast or as slow as you want. Following on from last week, we have some further developments for the assets. We began by creating a few quality bar assets. This was to make sure that we both understood the level of quality we wanted for the art. Since two thirds of the team are artists, it was almost a requirement that the game reach a certain level of visual fidelity. However, we also need to consider use case and performance, so these two factors will definitely limit us a lot. Since our game is going to have a lot of distinct visual style on a world by world basis, we thought it best to split up our team so that I take the responsibility for the real world assets meanwhile our other artist Ollie takes on the sci-fi space station theme that we want for our first world. This allows us to build up a consistent theme among each environment, leading to a more cohesive product overall. So far Ollie has updated parts of the level to fit the space station theme and has been measuring everything to get an accurate layout in Maya so that when we make our proper assets everything will be the correct size and we can place them into the engine correctly. This took an obscene amount of time, but the payoff we think was worth it. This also means that the level is more optimised as the UE4 geometry is a pain to work with and isn't optimal when running the game. For the space station level, Oli began to create some various assets to get a foundation of what the world would look like going forward. We wanted to get a balance of fantasy and toy details to really sell that these are the toys being played with. These should also give us an idea of how we will go about creating the rest of the environment and the assets that go in it, outlining the pipelines for us to follow. These include the hangar at the beginning of the level and the console station that will probably get a bit of touch up in the future. The large grinders in this section have also been replaced with a tube that will have particle effects to show it's not a place that you want to land on, like a particle accelerator except open and more deadly. This level is still under development for its first pass, so this could be changed by the time your next video comes out. When making the console station, we looked at the toys that were similar, namely the Star Trek Command Communication Console, as we looked into Star Wars and Star Trek as the toys from those franchises fit the theme that we want. 
They were simple but effective, as you could tell what these toys were just by looking at them, and as any artist will say, if you know what it is without telling you, they've done their job. It was also important for us to look at these assets to try and capture the toy detail, so looking at the real assets from the TV shows and movies wasn't really enough for us. So that made looking at these toys a really useful tool for reference to capture these kinds of details. When it comes to our space themed world, we want to take a lot of inspiration from these pop culture franchises, as we love them, and we've had many of these toys when we were younger too. The older parts of these franchises are a great reference because a lot of the sets that they used for filming were practical and not overly complicated in design. This meant that it translated really well into merchandise and we can create our own variations using the references we can find. Anyway, let's check up on Lewis and see how the bug fixing is going. Why do I smell burning? Oh god! Ah! So I talked to Lewis once he was alive and well, and you can expect a number of bug fixes coming to the game this update. The most notable of which is, we fixed the timer. It's actually time accurate, not tied to your frame rate anymore. So you can go set a time in the new build and brag about it to all your friends. The download to the new build is in the video description below. So if you want to download that and send us your fastest accurate times so we could taunt Ollie with them, that'd be awesome. Oh yeah, also a shout out to these guys for giving us some suggestions on how to fix the timer in the last video. On top of that, the time should now stop properly when the level is over and the star system should be showing up accurately again. You shouldn't be able to walk around anymore once the level is over too, so that was brought about by the time issues we were having. You've also moved around some kill boxes in the level, so you should be able to restart from your last checkpoint now, instead of just getting stuck and having to restart the whole level again. Another very big fix we made was to the clamber mechanic. The player shouldn't be clipping into terrain and getting stuck anymore. We couldn't recreate the bug after these changes, so we're fairly confident that it's all over and done with. Thank goodness too, because that's been really bugging us since the launch, and it would just completely ruin a good run. Some of you might notice that the resolution option in the previous build just flat out didn't work, and that's not the case anymore. You should be able to select from either a full screen mode that will automatically set itself to your monitor's resolution, or a windows mode that can manually set the resolution for all of yourself. We've also just made a lot of little changes to the game. That means that for the first time in forever, there's no error messages when we run the game in engine which is actually proving to be a new problem for Lewis since he got so used to quickly closing the error message pop-up. On top of that, everything is just a little bit more optimised now that less and less mechanics are tied to event tick. Lastly, a new feature we hoped some of you would find useful is the ability to rebind pretty much any input in the game via the controls menu. I know at least one of you wished that the slide key was bound to something other than the control, and now it can be. This even works with buttons on your mouse, so all of you who bind things to your thumb buttons can finally rejoice too. Oh, and if for some godforsaken reason you wanted to bind something to only work if you were holding shift, you can do that too. We've also got a new mechanic in the works relating to the grapple, but you'll have to wait a little longer until we reveal what that is, so don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss that cool new content drop. Or at least, we'll hope it'd be cool, I mean, why wouldn't it be, right? Lastly, once we're happy with the new grapple mechanic, we're looking at reworking the current existing one, as it's got its fair share of bugs, and now that it's been in the game for some time now, we feel like it doesn't really fit with the rest of the game. At least not in its current state. But of course, please drop us a comment below telling us what you think of the gravel as it is right now, because your feedback is important, and we wouldn't want to make any drastic changes to something people enjoy. That'd just be silly. And that about does it for today's video. Thank you so much for sticking with us this far, and as always, if you're watching in the future, you can go ahead and check out our next video right here. Or, if you're new to the channel and want to see how we got to this point, you can find all our development videos in the annotation above. Don't forget to drop us a like if you want to help us grow our channel, and as always, let us know what you think of the game in the comments section below, and you might just see yourself in the next devlog. You can also find the link to the game's download page in the top of the description. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.